Rani Lakshmibai was born as Manikarnika Tambe on November 19, 1828, in a Marathi Karhade Brahmin family to Morapant Tambe, father, and Bhagirathi Sapre, mother. Lakshmibai's mother died when she was four years old. Her father worked for Peshwa Baji Rao II of Bithur district. Rani Lakshmibai was educated at home and could read and write. He was also trained in shooting, horsemanship, fencing, and malakamba. He has three horses, Barangi, Avan, and Badal. In May 1852, Manikarnika was married to Gangadhar Rao Nawalkar, Maharaja of Jhansi, and was later named Lakshmibai, as per the traditions. In 1851, Lakshmibai gave birth to her son, Damodar Rao, who died after four months. The couple later adopted Gangadhar Rao's cousin, who was renamed Damodar Rao. The procedure of adaption was carried out in the presence of a British officer. A letter was handed to the officer from the Maharaja, with the instructions that the adopted child should be given due respect, and Jhansi should be given to Lakshmibai for her entire lifetime. However, in November 1853, after the death of Maharaja, the British East India Company applied the doctrine of lapse under the Governor General Lord Dalhousie. Under this policy, Damodar Rao's claim to the throne was rejected as he was the adopted son of Maharaja and Rani. In March 1854, Akshmibai was given Rs. 60,000 as an annual pension and was asked to leave the palace. On May 10, 1857, the Indian Rebellion started in Meerut. When this news reached Jhansi, Lakshmibai increased her protection and conducted a Haldi Kum Kum ceremony to convince her people that the British were cowards and there was no need to fear them. In June 1857, the 12th Bengal Native Infantry seized the Star Fort of Jhansi, persuaded the British to lay their arms and promised no harm to them. The infantry broke their word and massacred the British officers. However, Lakshmibai's involvement in this incident is still a matter of debate. Sepoys threatened Lakshmibai to blow up the palace, obtained huge money from Jhansi, and left the place four days after this incident. Orkia and Datia kingdoms tried to invade and divide Jhansi amongst them. Lakshmibai appealed to the British government for help, but received no reply as the British officials believed that she was responsible for the massacre. On March 23, 1858, Sir Hugh Rose, the commanding officer of the British forces, demanded Rani to surrender the city and warned that if she refused, the city would be destroyed. To this, Lakshmibai refused and proclaimed, We fight for independence. In the words of Lord Krishna, We will if we are victorious enjoy the fruits of victory. If defeated and killed on the field of battle, we shall surely earn eternal glory and salvation. On March 24, 1858, British forces bombarded the Jhansi. Defenders of Jhansi sent an appeal to Lakshmibai's childhood friend, Atya Tope. Atya Tope responded to this request and sent more than 20,000 soldiers to fight against the British army. However, soldiers failed to relieve Jhansi. As the destruction continued, Rani Lakshmibai with her son escaped from the fort on her horse Badal. During this time, she was escorted by her guards, Kuda Baksh Basharat Ali, Commandant, Ulam Gaus Khan, Dost Khan, Lala Bhau Bakshi, Modi Bai, Sundar Mundar, Kashi Bai, Diwan Raghunath Singh, and Diwan Jawahar Singh. She left to Kapli secretly with a handful of guards and joined the additional rebel forces, including Tatya Tope. On May 22, 1858, British forces attacked Kapli, and Lakshmi Bai was defeated. Rani Lakshmi Bai, Tatya Tope, and Rao Sahib fled from Kapli to Gwalior. Three of them joined the Indian forces defending the city. They wanted to occupy the Gwalior fort due to its strategic importance. Rebel forces occupied the city without facing any opposition and proclaimed Nana Sahib as Peshwa of Maratha Dominion, Rao Sahib as his governor. Lakshmibai was not able to persuade other rebel leaders to defend the force. On June 16, 1858, British forces made a successful attack on Gwalior. On June 17, in Kota Kisarai, near the Fool Bog of Gwalior, the British forces charged the Indian forces commanded by Rani Lakshmibai. The British army killed 5,000 Indian soldiers. Rani Lakshmibai was unhorsed and was wounded. There are two views on her death. Some people say that she was bleeding on the roadside and upon recognizing the soldier fired at him. She was dispatched with his carbine. However, another view is that she was dressed as a cavalry leader and was badly wounded. Rani did not want the British forces to capture her body and told Hermit to burn it. Rani Lakshmibai died on June 18, 1858.